Huge win for the United States, 4-0 over Costa Rica. Russ Thaler with Kalen Carr and the one and only Jay Demerit on Club and Country right now. Kalen, what would you change here for Costa Rica? Not a thing. How is that possible? Nothing. I'm not changing anything. I can't tell you how many times I've been frustrated to see Jurgen Klinsmann over the years completely change the team sheet, especially in the back line. These guys need to develop partnerships, relationships on the field. These two, these four, in fact, I wouldn't touch for the rest of Copa America. The back Just four. lock them in. A couple tactical changes for you, Simon. Don't freak out. We've got a Bobby Wood. We want him closer to goal. We're going to allow him to get a little closer to Dempsey. These two can have a little bit of an exchange. Come on, Bobby, come inside. Clint comes outside and we know he likes to drift. Bobby can occupy the center backs. Kalen Carr, ladies and gentlemen, clairvoyant, calling it as it would happen against Costa Rica. What stood out to you about the way the United States ended up playing in this game? Well, they made some slight tactical adjust adjustments. I don't think there was a need to completely blow things up because you lose to the top three team in the world in Colombia. Some of the smaller things they did so much better. Uh, the, on the Bobby Wood goal, obviously, I think they'd switch to a 4-4-2 by that point. But they get him closer to goal. Clint comes out. He likes to drift a little bit. It gave him a little more freedom to play. He found a lot of space getting in between the lines all day. Some of these small adjustments, I think, made a big difference. Yeah, and what do you think about that switch? Because it wasn't a lineup switch, but there was a tactical shift after the second goal. Well, I think it's been coming. You know, I think, uh, you know, time is told that maybe your number nine should stay in the box and score goals. And that, you know, that was apparent in Bobby Wood's goal. You know, he felt, and not only did he look like he felt, but he, you know, he proved that he felt way more comfortable, you know, in that number nine role. Uh, and, and then, you know, the rest kind of, you know, took place the rest of the game and, and it was cruise control for the U.S. And that's what they wanted now going into a final game. Who kind of kept things together for the United States? Your leaders, Jermaine Jones, Michael Bradley, uh, Clint Dempsey, you know, they were called on tonight. There was a bit of criticism in the media, all that kind of stuff that comes with, you know, coming into a big game that you have to win. You know, your leader's going to get called upon and all three of those guys showed up tonight. Um, you know, I, I think, again, spotlight on Jermaine Jones. He was both, he was both directions. He was putting in tackles. He was, you know, obviously scored a great goal. Uh, not only did that goal start from his own work defensively to break that play up in the midfield to get that break going for the U.S. And he was everywhere tonight. True, a true leader's performance. Jay will appreciate the, the center back love. Two guys <laughs> that you don't see, uh, you know, weren't called out a lot today, but quietly had really strong performances. Jeff Cameron and John Brooks. John Brooks, mm -hmm. you know, w was really strong in the tackle and then also had a, some nice composure in the box with a little shifty one-two. Mm -hmm. Jay, uh, <laughs> Like one, thing I never, one, one thing I never learned, <laughs> unfortunately. You perked up when, yeah. when Brooks did that. Like, oh, wow, center backs do that now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I did not know that. It but should hey, be noted anyway. that those two guys played really well against Colombia, too. You know, Cameron's involvement in the, in the first goal against Colombia notwithstanding. That's two mm -hmm. straight games for the center backs. And that's something we've called up upon for Jurgen. That, and that's part of what I was talking about in the other video is just giving these guys some continuity. Partnerships and center back are so important. Uh, up the field as a striker, Bobby Wood being able to understand the movement and, and build a relationship with Clint Dempsey. Now you're starting to see that because you've stuck with it even in a tough time. And that's the type of thing that I think can take you further in a tournament when maybe in a, you, it's easier to just throw it all out the window when it doesn't work right. A lot of people were calling for Darlington Nagby and, and maybe to a lesser extent Christian Pulisic, but instead the subs we see are sort of old MLS graybeards. Chris <laughs> Wondolowski and Kyle Beckerman and Graham Zussi comes in and scores a goal. What did you think about Klinsman's use of his subs? I think uh, I think he went to professional performance. You know, you, you're, you, you got a good lead Who's going to get you that lead and keep you that lead? It's your it's your leaders, it's your experienced guys, guys that know how to close out a game, guys that know how to manage a game, like Azuzi, for instance. Great experience for both KC and at the national team. He's the guy you want out there to do the right things to go and see a game through. And I think he made that those tactical subs instead of going with youth, which I think, you know, again, will still come with a bit of criticism because that's a perfect time for some of the youth to get in there and gain those experiences. And maybe we see Pulisic and or Nagby on Saturday against Paraguay. Coming up next, it's... Colombia and Paraguay, and we'll be back here after that game to recap what happens on the field and also how it affects Group A, including, of course, the United States. For Kalen and Jay, I'm Russ. Thanks for watching Club and Country. We'll see you back here soon.